Welcome back to Worlds 2019 and the State Farm Analyst Desk for Game 3, where FPX are 2-0 in the World Final, one away from defending it for the LPL. And I must say, I'm beginning to feel the feelings of last year creeping <laughs> in as EU right. stares down a possible 3-0 defeat. But while that doesn't look great for the EU region. I do want to talk about how FPX got here to such a dominant position. Yeah, and LWX is a player for me who, while the rest of his team does enable him, I think Crisp has been an incredible player. I think Doinby's had good control of mid. He's doing in this series what he did in the LPL, where he nearly set kill records. And he's doing it again. He's deathless with, I believe, 18 or 19 kills at this point. He has been out of control this series. Yeah, 19, 0, and 11. And we talked about, during the pause, the way they're also winning the draft minigame within this series. Yeah, and I'll take the flame. I did not expect LWX to just smash through this series. I felt for a very long time LWX was propped up because he was laning with such an incredible support in Chris. And it was the fact that Chris facilitated LWX to look so good. But in this series, he is having a career-defining series. LWX UX is smashing kids right now. Yeah, I mean, but there's nothing bad in saying that Crisp and Tian are still setting him up extremely yep. well. I think Team that, game. that duo from jungle and support are the best we have in the world right now. This was the first initial fight that happened in the last game that G2 didn't really want. Like, they wanted to take the Drake, then go back and play laning phase because you need items on Yasuo. This was actually suddenly early kills over to FPX, double kills specifically for LWX. And now, when he has the lead, the team will keep playing aggressive to his side. Yeah, and we really got to see FPX come together here. And also, we got to see G2's greed punished to a level that we've yet to see so far at the World Championship. Like, even this play, yes, G2 wants to try and turn the game around, but when those high-risk plays don't work, they are also very punishing. They overcommit, and then they get destroyed. But this is what I love about FPX right now, because what FPX has decided to do in this series and say, we don't need all this 1v1 shenanigans. We don't need to keep our top laner against Wonder or anything. No, whenever there's a chance for G2 to start a fight, FPX have already moved four members nearby. And what FPX are bringing, especially in the last game, way more crowd control on their side. So the moment G2 try and step forward, Mickey especially, Instant CC, and then you pick up a kill for your AD carry. That's why LWX are getting so many of these kills as well. It's just much easier to execute League of Legends, and then individually, FPX are skill checking G2 and winning. Yes. As FPX, FPX take to the stage, let's go ahead and look at one more roll of dominance for them. This one coming in the form of a team fight and a sweet ace. Oh, that was uh, for a moment. You were like, okay, okay, G2 can get a kill. <laughs> this this LWX play. It's As coming. It rolls out. It's coming. Because now, at first, you know, just poking a little bit. Oh. So Want to stay away well, from the enemy team. That's not where ADC <laughs> wants to be until Lovely. boom. Love the Duke. And then after, funny enough, FPX are actually about to rise ult away from the fight. But then Mickey stops the rise ulti from happening. And then instant turnaround. Oh my goodness. Same amount of damage. Yeah, definitely one of those rise ult mitch you don't want to interrupt. <laughs> I would say in yeah, retrospect. Probably would have been safer to let him yeah. go. So, I mean, right. at that point, though, you saw on the cams, G2 just started laughing. And they just yeah. they kind of opened mid and just started running directly into them, just being like, okay, this one's probably over, guys. Like, throw what you got, but let's just go next. FPX chooses blue with the side selection yep. in game three. No surprise there. But yeah. I want to talk about where G2 finds an answer. How do they come back into this series and extend it? So G2, as we all know, is undefeated in best of fives this year and they've been down 0-2 before. So in terms of teams that are down 0-2, G2 is definitely one of the better teams in this situation. And you could see it by the fact that they were laughing a little bit towards the end of that game, that they did have spirited conversations off stage rather than one person kind of blankly staring at the ground while the coach tries to talk to him. A story we've seen from other teams in similar situations. So if a team is going to come back, it could be G2. But as you mentioned at the start, we can't keep having 3-0 finals, Dash. <laughs> I mean, uh, FX will have the edge going into draft, for sure. Like, they've figured it out already. They will be able to first pick Nautilus again, because mm -hmm. it's most likely not banned. I'm expecting still Kiana, Zaya, Pantheon as the three bans from G2. But what you can do now on G2's side is don't necessarily early pick things like Varos. You can actually, if you want to play with the Ezreal style and try and play heavy towards top side, it is an opportunity for you. But you need something then that can early roam together with doing B and not the pike. 
that needed to wait eight minutes before he got a tier mat to match the Nautilus. That cannot happen. Frost, give me your final thoughts. I think it's going to be more standard League of Legends with G2 with late game insurance policies. I agree with Deficio that they're probably going to trade kind of an early priority bot lane pick unless the Zaya is available and try to get Yankos one of his champions. Every single time Tian is getting that lease in and every single time second band, it's Olaf Rek'Sai and Yankos is being forced onto this lease. I want to see Yankos get one of those more powerful jungle picks so they have an answer in that early game. The players are prepping for game three. This is the shot for G2. They've got to shoot it. We're going to head back over to Quick Shot. Kobe and Papa for the call. And welcome back to the cast as Kobe is praying for more games. <laughs> we want to enjoy this atmosphere for as long as we possibly can. And in order to do that, G2 Esports need to do something different and to bounce back. They are on the red side this game as FPX have picked the blue side. And Papa Smithy, how do you anticipate the drop to change as we go into this game? I think red side bans have to be different. We talked about the gamble G2 took, leaving a lot of those common cards from FPX's previous successes open. Didn't work. And now you're facing the barrel of three match points. But what do you add to the ban list? Because can you really afford to leave Rise open to FPX at first pick? Yeah, as we've been discussing, you can drop a Zaya ban now uh, and look for something else, right? You're trying to get yourself into a position where you can use the flex pick to get that winning lane. Big difference in both these games has been FPX first to the punch both times around. And even when G2 have drafted winning lanes, the Rome Fest of game number one happened, those lanes didn't matter, and the game closed from there. So really going to have to dig deep G2 Esports to find the victory. Now I want to see if G2 go back to a slightly more traditional style of team comp because I cast my mind back to the predictions earlier on Countdown. And it was Jat that once again flip-flopped. But his flip-flop was predicated on the basis of flexing. Yep. It is flex picks, flexing the Pike, flexing the Yasuo and Akali that arguably is part of the reason why G2 is in this position. If they get rid of those flex picks, let's see if the prediction flip-flopper from Jack has more faith in G2. But there's some difficulties here because after losing two games in a world final, you have to talk about draft scenarios where the player just says, I don't want to play that again. I lost with it. The Gragas Yasuo, are they feeling that they can roll it back? G2 have great mental game. They have had the mental edge of many teams in best of five. But in this scenario, you definitely get those times where you ask the coach afterwards, why did you drop that? And it's because they said they didn't want to play this. And add on top of all of that pressure, Papa Smithy, the sounds that you are hearing from this arena. Yes, it can fuel you, but holy crap, can it weigh you down knowing this many people are expecting you to bounce back. Don't even say those words, quick shot. I think one of the most important things in the current state of League of Legends is to always be looking for the win always looking to remain on the attack. And so an aggressive champion select that can set you up with a clear game plan is necessary. Not often we have to shout during the pregame <laughs> just to hear each other. There's no inside voices in the Aqua Hotel Arena, that's it for sure. It genuinely hurts. It <laughs> genuinely hurts my ears because there is so many people cheering and screaming their lungs out. And this many French fans are still hopeful that G2 can bounce it back. But we are on the cusp of FPX making history, a team that has struggled to find success until this summer. They were one series win away from being the most successful regular season team in the LPL. They win their first championship. And if they close this game out, it's the second world championship in a row for the LPL for China and the first ever for Fun Plus Phoenix. And in the modern era, a first time Qualifier for Worlds hasn't won the entire title since way back when, since Taipei Assassin so many years ago. So in the modern era, it's unprecedented to just rock up to your first Worlds and then take home the trophy. I do us enjoy seeing the smiles and laughter on the side of G2 as we are just about ready for draft. I can see both Perks and Tian giving the all clears in chat and I anticipate us starting the draft. So let's get this uh, future seeing crystal ball from Kobe back out and open. Okay, yep, yep. The two of you have had fantastic anticipation on the draft in both of the previous games. So where do we start knowing Fun Plus Phoenix are on the blue side? Knowing also that G2 are backs against the walls, must win situation. I would not be surprised to have them throw a curveball and still remain on the attack. One opportunity that they have had has been top lane carries. And they've even talked about in the past, can they blind pick a carry 
for Wonder in this matchup versus Gimgun because FPX do not look to have that be the priority for them on the Rift. And G2 are definitely more flexible in the amount of ways that they can win the game. That will be an evolving story as the draft goes on. We do see a change in bans. Rakan is banned by G2, so Rise left open. FPX kind of did a favor. They banned Kai'Sa themselves, but they are going to claim the Zaya, which is much lower priority for LWX, and I guess that's why G2 left it open. And this was the kind of ban that we were discussing that you can let go. In response to the Zaya first pick, though, it comes at the cost of the two most prominent Doom B champions. Rise and Nautilus here. Potential flex options abound, including Wanda rolling back that top lane rise. FBX, they've got Zaya, but again, only three games on the year for LWX. Looking at summer season onwards on that Zaya, no Rakan to pair with it. Let's see how the first round goes here. As Tian is going to stay with comfort on the Lee Sin. It's worked for him so far this series. And with Karagas and Lee Sin taken off the table, does Yankos consider locking in a jungler now? Or what direction do they pivot? Maybe carry for first. Exactly. You have to make the choice right now. Are you going to put more priority on that early game for Yankos, which I think a lot of people are looking towards right now? since that has been the area uh, to get the start of momentum for the game, which has determined the way this series has gone? Or do you actually try and lock it in for Perks before he receives more bans? Because as you know, <laughs> the Nautilus could very well be in Mickey's hands or Caps' hands. But Kobe, let's come back to one of your ponderings about the top lane carry. I spy with my little eye an Ezreal pick on the side of G2, which suggests you're not playing bot side, because Ezreal is, of course, famed for his ability to repel ganks 1v2 with arcane shift and his flash, meaning that he's so maneuverable and hard to lock down. I think so far, your prediction's looking on the money, because if I'm G2, I'm going top side. I agree, Papa, because first, in order to top lane carry, you have to lay a foundation to build yes. it upon. Uh, it definitely is resource intensive. Let's see if they continue to ban out. Rumble here, one of the champions that Doom B specifically used in mid lane with the Predator to try and push and roam and affect specifically, funnily enough, Papa, the top lane. Yeah. And the question is, what do G2 then lock in here? We assume for Jankos, once we get into this phase to give the option to put either that rise top or middle, pivot on whatever fun plus phoenix decide to lock in so what safe blind side uh, uh, uh blind picks do we have that you think fun plus would like to run i think when it comes to g2 firstly the rex side was banned last time out when it's double ad banned and it's gonna go that way as well so if you look at what he's played this tournament we're kind of at jarvan or the elise that hasn't worked so far in this series so i think it might have to be the ad choice here and it is the jarvan Jarvan locked in and we'll get those questions answered in just a moment. The Gangplank for Gimgoon did a lot of work in game one and it was Gangplank into Rise as well. It was a matchup that Wanda was doing fairly well in the 1v1, but all of Tian's ganks got him ahead. It took so much effort to make it happen though, Quickshot. So many resources from FBX sent topside. Jarvan can level two gank and it is a winning matchup for Rise as we're actually seeing the hover on the Draven for some more lane domination. And the gauntlet has been thrown by FBX. They've got double globals that they can throw to that bottom side of the map. It is Gimgoot's tried and true gangplank and a mid lane Galio for doing B. Meanwhile, G2 have to lay it down. What's going to be the final oh! carry? And it is the Vigar locked in. It has been a fringe pick here at the World Championship, but what do you make of it? Papa Remember Smith? that started with a Draven hover, which means they were considering Ezreal mid. This could actually be Ezreal mid into the Galio. You don't have to run the Vagar there. This is another one where if you consider, put down the cage, hook someone into it, that's a whole lot of crowd controls. Let's wait till 20 seconds to really fully put the picture together. Definitely true. Ezreal can try and start pushing that wave, fire those mystic shots through, but They've only got two seconds left to make it happen. There will be no twist at the end True. of this champion select. Now, if there is one thing that G2 is signaling with the baby cage from Vigar and the cataclysm from Jarvin, if they can't win the team fights, they sure as hell want to put walls up to prevent FBX steamrolling them. The disruption that those two champions will cause in these mid-game fights could be the turning point for G2. But then Galio and Thresh have similar opportunities. We're shouting during this pick and ban. 
Baron. This is going to be an intriguing one to me. Yankos has to be the MVP. He has the ganking jungler. He needs to get the ganking done. He needs to be the summer split MVP Yankos. The man that once wore the moniker of the first blood king. Here on European soil, the European champions carrying the hope of Europe. But the man on your screen, the dancing, singing, wonder kid super carry <laughs> from the LPL, wants to close this out three and zero. And we are moments away from what could be the final game of World 2019. There is that Summoner's Cup. We do hold out hope. We don't have a repeat of the 3-0 last year. This is going to be an awesome one. Just very quickly, if you don't know the FPX story we tried to talk about in the previous game, the experience of Fun Plus Phoenix. Papa Smithy, you were talking about it in Drop. This is a team that has popped up on the international stage. They have 15 games played across the board. Fun Plus Phoenix as an organization had a huge turning point once Tian and Duan B joined the organization, comparing their win losses from 2018 to 2019. And the freshness of these players to the international stage makes this performance and this dominance that much more impressive. It's a 90% win rate on the regular season, and Doinby was asked about play styles and kind of understanding him. He said, every team that I come on plays a certain style. That is the FBX style, but it fits them so well. And he brings something that's incredibly important in Pro League. It's leadership to every team that he joins. Perks now under attack. All right, flash for flash, it's traded. Arcane Shifter, uh, I think used there as well. Now the blue buff is under siege. Fun plus Phoenix will be able to secure this one. Now, any other AD carry, I think that'd be a little bit more valuable, but there is some wiggle room on an Ezreal with that E. But flash for flash, when G2 could have gone for a non sided bot lane and went Ezreal bot so they could play top side, means that suddenly on the weak side, Ezreal goes from being unflappable to potentially taken down. So there still is a reward there as Yankos don't buff to buff. Plus, this is very intentional from FPX. They're trying to split the map once again. And we briefly talked about it last time, but this is what happens to the jungle when you do one of those early invades. It basically means you have to cross for the buffs and you're gonna leave behind one of the wolves to have a delayed spawn on the enemy's experience. But the biggest effect of it is not on the junglers themselves. It's actually on those lane matchups and it's allowing that bottom lane where the flash discrepancy on the Ezreal is being pushed under the tower. Now the hook lands. Oh man, that death sentence is fantastic. Mickey down to 100 HP. LWX and Chris have just been the superior 2v2 this series. FBX open up a point to attack and they're trying to just get the maximum out of this bottom lane advantage. Perks actually spotted Tian. Sonic with the Q, so knew he was there. Positioned accordingly. This is such a risky tower dive and perks and Mickey, they want to get away. Sonic Wave should still be on cooldown and the demolish will allow some damage to this tower. Minions denied here. One melee goes down. They're trying to zone them even from experience here. Are they going to make their way back in? Zero CS for perks. Three and a half minutes into the game. Nearly three full waves and perks just gets on the board. He's flashless, he's CSless, he's experienceless and capsless. He has been to survive. And look at the respectful timing from FPX. They are maintaining a couple of seconds lead on G2. You saw Yankos heading down after the recall on Jarvan, but FPX already pulled out of the bottom lane play. They let up on the pressure and actually turned towards mid lane so they don't get caught under the tower red-handed. And Kobe, the decision making here was fascinating because I was looking and saying, all right, red buff stolen, blue buff claimed as a level two Lee Sin, because you can't actually get level three from the bot side of the jungle and started on blue buff. You can't really invade against the Jarvan, you'll be caught red-handed. Instead, they make it about what they do have, the ability to zone away, the ability to deny the Ezreal, and instead, they claim in a scenario where I think seven, eight out of 10 teams would have been three bucks. Now again, we talked about the pressure that transitions through Summoner's Rift. Now there is a big wave building up on top side. That's where your jungler has to be. Tian has already taken the Scuttle Crab and helping Gimgun move up that wave. Trying to take away the possibility of an answer from Yankos, the offensive gank from Jarvan. Now he's found him, and they can feel secure. All right, uh, picking a fight there over the big chicken. Yankos and Tian now trading a little bit, looking at the minimap. Caps is pushed all the way to his tower. 
still farming up with that Baleful Strike. Now from behind, Crisp, no flash available. If the Death Sentence lands with the help of Tian, it might be enough damage. But obviously the Galio at this point in the game, maybe not just enough. This is why we keep highlighting Tian. He doesn't even go for the recall on Lee Sin. He's doing as much as he can to set these lanes up so they can fend for themselves. Three games in a row, Lee Sin has had the map pressure early, not even farm to level six. We so often see really impressive jungling performance here. The biggest delta between the two teams to me is the two junglers. And it was what we anticipated. Tian has been one of the most impressive junglers all tournament long. And he's had a significantly bigger impact in the early stages than what Yankos has been able to do. All right, now the big minion wave on bottom side allows FPX to get the recall off. Definitely a lot of vision here for G2. Let's see if Chris actually risks trying to get into the tower. And they are going to do it. Okay, so 25 CS to 41. That's where Perks is playing with. Now it is matched in the top lane as Wonders 44 to 25. LWX comes back in with a TP. And he comes back in with a BF sword. So the most combat stats versus the least combat stats here on the back. And that's because Perks has been necessitated into bad back timers. And let me highlight once again, Tian. He moves down because there's a pushing minion wave bottom. So we know how this time, goes, Kobe. Exactly. Every time they play with the waxing and waning of minion waves on Summoner's Rift, and so they don't lose out on any of those extra gold pickups. And even though G2 prepped for it and tried to find counters, turns out you keep doing that, especially with the damage lead that the Zaya has. You just take L's incrementally again and again as this Ezreal who's on welfare in the early game. And this time we see defense from Yankos. Make sure that there's no dive possible. FBX just turn their sights towards the dragon. They'll pick up the mountain. All right, Mountain Drake uncontested here with all the control that FBX have been able to accrue. Now, we haven't seen too much of that top lane, but I do want to track it. Wonder is continuing to farm up, as you somewhat expect in the early game. Kim Goon has hit level six. So if any of those bot lane plays come down, Cannon Barrage, Hero's Entrance, Perks and Mickey could be in a lot of trouble. Definitely been the story throughout this series. What could be the possible changes here that G2 could throw into it, though? And those things come from mobility and crowd control. The reason this Vagar is picked is because of the AoE CC. We always see it with the Glacial Augments. So you can try and chase down and find those kills uh, and set your team up to start the snowball in their favor. While there's the S word, scaling on Rise, on Vagar, late game looks good. We've learned that the meta in 2019 isn't about scaling. It's about being forced into a decision again and again, and making no play is often worse than making a bad play. Right now, they haven't been able to find Gangstrom Java, and he's out of position for this zone off, and that's three plates done in an instant. And just count the objectives that FBX get with this big minion wave. They get multiple turret plates, they deny CS from perks. They're gonna they, get a turret. They also are gonna get the whole thing. That's first turret bonus. Yeah, absolutely beautifully played here by FBX. No jitters, no nerves. They get that flash from perks, and they just keep twisting the pressure until the tower breaks. Now, some kudos to Perks and Mickey. They did play respectfully and defensively. They didn't give up more. But when you're down a thousand gold in your penultimate or final game, it is a problem. Exactly. We saw this all season long from FBX in the LPL. Once again, LWX, richest man on the rift. He is for sure. And all of that from a flash for flash that was the right call. If you can get the AD carries flash, and AD carry you know wants to play without jungle help in an Ezreal, then you just can get cascading advantages. And it comes back to what I was mentioning about how things are in this meta. G2 haven't got anywhere to target, haven't got anywhere they want to fight, and they keep losing and not claiming anything for themselves. I would say the one area that G2 can look for is to try and play around Wonder. There's an equally big CS lead growing for this Rise. And we always mention, you know, the Rise matchup into Gangplank. He's been doing a very good job of trying to get that while FPX have been able to get a big lead on bottom. Wonder should be the point for G2 to mount the counter attack. The Rise, everything was invested into it. And that's why you can see FPX attacking him in the top lane. After that first tower fell, just want to let you know that was the fastest first tower of Worlds 
2019. Just in the previous game, FPX set the fastest Baron of Worlds 2019, and FPX may want to set another record winning this final. They're putting pressure on the top lane tower, and there's no initiation just yet. Attack the winning lane. No longer does Ryze get to just wail away on a GP, and remember, GP has his ult while he's parked bot lane against the Ezreal, so they can always outnumber us. Here we go. Yeah, and Kossi failed flashes. He hits the wall. Doing B trades a flash for a flash, and Yankos is able to escape for now. And look, they're making a lane swap once again. Perks uses the teleport up to top side to equalize, and they're sending Wonder bottom. This is in preparation for the possible play around Rift Herald. We're entering 10 minutes, it will spawn, and this opens up G2 with the extra teleport on Rise. They can actually go for an answer. You can read so much into that face plant flash from Yankos. He has been somewhat run around in circles this series. His team is down a thousand gold already. We've just crested the 10 minute mark and that Rift Herald has been set up. It has been secured and it is safe for FPX. No kills on the board, but it's so hard for G2 to contest when they haven't got their scaling down. And remember that FPX got advantages with globals. And that doesn't usually happen because you usually sacrifice globals, long cooldowns, for this other stats. You pay for having AOE globals especially, and neither of them have been used. Therefore, G2 have to continue to seed advantages. That is such an early Rift Herald for FPX that they will get immediate gold out of it. Yep, Tian immediately just pops on top side. They're just trying to funnel as much into LWX so you can get your crit multipliers going on Zaya, and then you force the team fights uh, with your Galio Lee Sin engages. Tian has the possibility to go for a dive here. The boop from Shelly easily secures oh. the second tower. LWX up 20 CS already. Perks and Mickey trying to do what they can to push back the siege from FPX, but they are faltering and falling behind. 20 CS and at least a share in 10 plates at 11 minutes in the game. All right, we're 11 minutes, 25 seconds on the clock. The latest first blood of the World Championship clocks in at 15.52. We're a few minutes away from that record, and G2 will want to secure it because they need some bonus gold back. They need to get themselves back into this game before it runs away. They're falling behind. Yeah, they can say that again. They've lost so much territory, Quick Shot. FPX are actually setting up for a possible pre-turret plate fall, all outer turrets taken for themselves. You see the rotation now mid. Because those are the standing uh, turret plates left, Aldobex and Chris immediately there with B. They push as hard as they can. Oh, here comes Yankos. Cataclysm is available to him. Tian is going to be securing the second dragon of the game. G2 Esports being pushed further and further behind. No team in the history of League has been able to complete the Grand Slam. G2 are not looking likely of being the first one able. RNG faltered, SKT faltered, and right now at 12 minutes, you have to feel that G2 is going to falter and at the final hurdle. Exactly, quick shot. It's just so obnoxious to play against this FBX comp from ahead. They could use the Gimgoon ult to stop Ezreal from getting more turret plates on the top side. Galio teleports in there. Thing about a Vagar for Cassis doesn't force anything in the early game. They haven't been able to play through it. And B just wants to wave clear by time for the plates to go down. All right, just a reminder, the latest first blood, small correction from earlier, 15 minutes, 22 seconds. Two and a half minutes away from it. At 13 in the game, Caps TPs to the top lane. Come Realm up. Warp is now coming in behind the tower, and Wonder will not be able to find any follow-up. He is currently the pressure point for G2 plus 40 CS in the top lane, Kobe. And as it stands, he needs to find a way to bring G2 back into this game. And look how much power FPX are bringing to the map. That was literally just Chris roaming up with the Moby boots on Thresh, forcing out two big cooldowns from G2. They had to make two rotations, teleport from mid, as well as the Realm Warp coming through, just to stay even in the map state. G2 can get exclusive vision on an area, then suddenly the Nautilus Vagar will have a lot of zone control, but so behind in map control that it's more about pick wards for Crisp to try to get an initiation. Thresh has been unleashed on the map, and that's why you just have so much 
ability as LWX to push up and even greed for a turret plate just as the turret plates fall. Look at doing B. He's going to get caught out there by the dredge line of Mickey. So that's an initiation or a tower dive that is somewhat thwarted. Just over a minute away from breaking the record for the Lotus first blood. True Shot Barrage comes out. LWX gets tagged. The death sentence pulls back Mickey. He escapes with his life for now. First blood to the first blood king from Europe. But what more can they get? Wonder continues to chase. Remember, the Realm Wolf is on cooldown. Mystic Shark will not find a target as the Arcane Shift sends. Perks over the wall. G2 get one back. And Caps is able to make the pick. The Glacial Augment slowing them down long enough for G2 to get some money in the bank. The X1 in position to use their globals that time. Kim Goon's ult just about to come off cooldown. You're right, the slowing field is what leads to hesitation for once. And LWX being chunked means that he takes the safest route and doesn't put out damage. Then follows it up with the stun on the Vagar cage, getting the kill. Galia ultimate also used. So when we get back to live, you have to count your cooldowns. After that kill, Paris is ignited. 11 plates to two. I am a little bit more of a pessimist in real life and don't yet share the hope that is felt by the Parisian crowd. G2 Esports have two minutes until the next Infernal. And that 1500 gold lead does feel less bad the longer we go into this game. That dirty S word that you were talking about, scaling. Papa Smithy oh. of scaling it can come to help G2 if they stay this close. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot of help though, Quickshot, because <laughs> LWX is window shopping right now and he's eyeing that Infinity Edge and he is very close. One more paycheck, one more recall, he gets Infinity Edge and then because LWX has gotten so much money funneled into him, he can even afford an early QSS. And it's worth mentioning that G2's comp doesn't chase very well. Vega wants people coming to him. His range on his event horizon is relatively short. So with the fact that they're behind, smack down the control wards and you're probably fine as FBX for quite a while in this game. And so important to note the tools that LWX can use with that ultimate, with that flash to get away some of the key initiation. The Dark Matter gets thrown down into the river. So one minute until Dragon, you can already feel FBX cheating towards that bottom half of the map. They're pushing their vision forward, Kobe and G2. Do you think they try to contest this next one? They've conceded the last few. I would actually expect G2 to attack the opposite side of the map and get the rise into top lane to get that last outer turret solo gold. Uh, if you can get Wonder more fed, Papa Smith is talking about, you know, the power and side lane rise later in the game in splitting the map. Yes, you have to deal with Gangplank and Galio ultimates, but you have to play off of your strengths. Now, you reach a point in this game where both Galio and Gangplank will be exposed by the champions in the solo lanes of G2. So that's what you want to get to as fast as possible. But these moments where you're setting up around the Drake do at least not seed advantages to FPX. 10 seconds until Drake. LWX has not gone shopping. He does not have teleport available. So that Infinity Edge and QSS you were talking about, Kobe, is not yet activated. Hero's Entrance is available for Doombi. Cannon Barrage is available for Gim Goon. And Gim Goon is coming from base. There is a lot of damage from that Dark Matter coming down. Infernal Burn it. down to 2,000 HP. Here comes Tian. We're into a smite fight. It's secured by Yankos, but Doombi gets the kill. Now all of a sudden, Tian's running for his life. The Realm Wolf from Wonder might deliver Mickey to safety, and they get out. They trade one for Inferno. Hashtag worth for the side of G2. They take an Inferno under the nose of FBX, and they get a decent reset to mid lane as well. Woo, the world was holding its breath on that one, Papa Smithy, as Yankos gets kicked out of the pit. He's able to land the smite, and even though he goes down, G2 will take that because of the scaling that they're trying to lean on. In the end, though, FBX are able to clean another G2 member off the map. And these are the windows we alluded to, the no IE being done. LWX late to the picture here. Ooh. You see the new age combo, you have to flash before you taunt now as the Galio. So it looks a bit different, they don't get the full CC direction. And the fadeaway smite works from the grave for Yankos. I did more than hold my breath, Kobe. I clinched as well, but oh. Yankos gets the secure. And G2 are still 2,000 gold down. The only kill accrued is with Yankos. And Perks now finds himself in a challenge up top while Yankos is able to get helped out and Caps finds a kill onto Crisp. Perks has got flash available to him. Teleport straighted. The barrel comes down. Hero's entrance. Lands onto Gimgun. Wonder finishes the teleport, but that's going to be a 20.
Davenport. It's flashed away from. Wonder stays alive, keeps alive, gets away. Tia's now the target. Gets tagged and slowed, and Red Buff does its work. It's a trade of one for one, but teleports were committed, and G2 are now on the offensive. Remain on the attack, Trevor. They're still looking to create plays, and after this, they're able to force them back. It looks like they're going to roam into the river and go towards mid rather than trying to push down this turret. Two games ago, Papa Smithy, you called it. G2 will not go quietly into the French night. They continue to find opportunities to fight, and they want to extend this series. And when we get the Reaper, you see one of the shortcomings of FBX is that they look at what resources they have and say, we could get a kill here. They don't always respect enemy TP timings, and they were just outnumbered on the play. And highlighting the G2 composition again, and the Vagar pick. Well, let's actually let's take a look at what happened after the initial pick. It is FPX trying to force a counterattack, but you know that G2 have the extra champion advantage, so there's a time limit on this FPX play. And because Wonder delays that long, it means there is a counter kill for G2, and in the end, they go two for one. FPX starting up the Baron, though. You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. The Baron has already been started. 20 minutes and 10 seconds. They've already set a record. Yankos escapes a hook, but he gets caught by a barrel. Chris is locked down, but none of the damage follows. There was fired too early. G2 have been able to thwart the Baron play, and that will be enough for now. They want the enemy to come to them. Like we mentioned, that's where G2 might be weaker, but they don't actually register the death sentence. They have to use a stopwatch. FBX fishing. This time, nothing's by. All right, G2 need to get their game plan online here. Push the side wave with Wonder on the rise. And then you look to use the Vagar pick potential that they drafted for, right? This is the pick that is supposed to be the surprise twist at the end. With that and a Nautilus, you have a lot of potential of trying to pick off those members. Again, Crisp is always the target. And you see the vision here? This is exactly what you want, because remember that Event Horizon is an entire choke that you can't contest the Baron from. So getting Baron vision when they feel strong enough and then forcing FBX to check, that's exactly how G2 find a Baron. Meanwhile, looking from FBX's side, the Infinity Edge was completed by LWX, and they have the possibilities of this Galio ultimate to answer. So it's a much more about the counterplay rather than setting up an offensive look. You can see Caps right now stepping go. forward, throws out the spooky ghost. The Dark Matter comes down as well, but he held on to the Primordial Boost. Yankos has locked down Doom B inside the Cataclysm. He now is the target. That's a body block from Wonder. Steps in front of the Justice Punch, but the death sentence is amazing. Mickey is caught. Chris, that was fresh and clean, but G2 aren't done yet. They're putting pressure onto the tower. The Event Horizon blocks down some, but they kick back under the tower. Tiang gets blown up, but he secures a kill into Wonder. It's not done yet as Gimgoon is now stepping forward. Cannon Barrage will come up and available in just a moment. The Super Soaker is thrown out by Caps, but there's no follow-up damage. Gimgoon is being zoned away by Yankos. These pushes are being played around the cooldown of the Event Horizon from Vagar. You can see the only opportunity for FPX to counterattack is after that is used in mid. In the end, G2 are able to force another tower kill for themselves. Here's the first one. They pick out LWX and then switch focus over to Duan B. Yankos also able to interrupt here. And even though he goes through, it's actually a hook from Chris pulling Mickey under the tower and forcing this opportunity. Each of these fights played on the finest of margins so close to this flank here, and even the flank through barrels from Gimgoon making a difference. That replay brought to you by Axe Gaming. What's your move? G2 keeping themselves in it. The Drake, I think, again. completed there by Perks. True Shot Barrage is on cooldown, but the Dragon is secured. Five members of FPX are in the pit. Teleport is coming down. Baron is available for the taking, and it will be secured by TN and FPX. But at what cost? The Winds of War come out, and as the Feathers fly, they're pulled backwards. That lands a route onto Mickey. Hero's Entrance is the escape route for doing B. They get Baron, they get out. That was beautiful. Look at the coordination on that call. They preemptively talk about it. I'm laying the lantern here. Go into the pit to then ultimate out. 
and they make sure every member of FPX leaves wearing purple. I love the geometry kind of plays they do about attacking every angle, opening up space, leaving the Galios the tasty treat to ult out. There was just no way to punish for G2. You can literally see the communication and the forethought from FPX as the game is playing out here. And now, what will they do with the Baron buff? Mid lane has an outer turret left standing. They can just try and send Galio here, who is waiting on ultimate cooldown to be able to clean up the AoE. And I was trying to see a moment or two ago that uh, Papa Smithy, you talked about how G2 don't really chase particularly well. They're hoping that GLP and the Spooky Ghosts will do something. But now, fortunately, FPX have to come to them with Baron and Part Minions with the ability to siege and to push forward. Maybe G2 can find opportunities. Kim Goon is waiting in the wings. FPX have to seed and they have to give respect to this push because they don't have the Galio ultimate yet. It's a few more seconds left on cooldown and they don't have the positioning. Running through mid lane really gets nothing. You cannot get through what is kind of a, a freeze scenario with Vega having Event Horizon every minion wave and just having a super low range comp again. That's been FBX's story the entire time. They never play ranged top laners. It's been mostly melee mid laners. So because of that, they're gonna fight. They have to play three lanes to really get Baron value. And thank you to the observers for highlighting the vision difference there. G2 Esports just trying to cover the mid lane river entrances and they don't have particularly deep vision. While they were just waiting in the wings, Doombi is able to push all the way to top inner, get a lot of damage down, and while G2 are responding, it'll open up the ability in the mid lane for FPX to push. That timing window we talked about, quick shot, is almost up. FPX trying to collapse here now. G2, will they get him? All right, now look at the minimap at one Missed. cost. Do it be! Gets the kill onto Caps! And the teleports now come in. This could be it for G2. LWX goes forward. He won't find the kill into Yankos, but there is a potential reply. Oh! Time doesn't do anything. Perks stays alive. It's a fight on multiple fronts. Now Perks is in trouble. He's got no flash. He's got low mana, and he can't find anything. Tian takes him down. Fun plus Phoenix. Oh, accelerating ahead. Nearly 5,000 gold. Observers once again oh! show the true genius. Of you the are FX sentenced plan. to death, Wonder, Chris, Flash, Q's, and FPX. They want to lift the cup. Behind enemy lines, the pitch there were obscene. Tian kicking the Vega to his death meant no delays. They're going to break the base on this Baron. Inhibitors going to fall. Mickey and Caps, they have respawned. G2 Esports down five and a half thousand gold. The hope of Europe, the hope of the Grand Slam, and it is fleeting and flying away as FPX are crushing them. There's nothing proverbial about that dagger through the heart. It was clear. Watch the replay. Tian has been behind enemy lines for so long as G2 come to try to kill the Galio, and once again, the communication is real. He finds his man. Doesn't matter that he misses the kick. It's an alley-oop to Doyen. Yeah, I was skeptical they would have enough damage uh, to finish it off since the Sonic Wave doesn't hit, but Doyen B just dunks him there. And then you can see the plan come to fruition for FPX. And this is what we are talking about. They pull together the collapse. Tian actually able to safeguard away from Mickey's hook. And then Perks is left by himself, isolated, where they thought that G2 were the ones springing the trap. The G2 story all year was no man left behind, styling as a five-man group. But it's been FPX in this best of five who have been more on point in moments like that. Very equal damage share coming through as you were kind of talking about there, Kobe. They don't really have a massive damage dealer when Zai has been zoned pretty frequently. So here we go. All right, there's the engage. Event Horizon and Cataclysm. Perks escapes off the wall, but Mickey's the sacrificial lamb. Doing B goes down, it's Perks to get the kill. Now Kim Goon's going low. True Shot Rush flies across, but G2 Esports are buying time. Keep your eyes on the minimap. Super's pouring in the base. That kill just earned them survival in this series. Quick Shot G2 fight to live another day. They get a critical pick when there are very little windows to go for, and they're able to take down Dorian B. That means they're able to reset off these super minions. What can they actually complete, though? We'll lose the Mountain Drake, but take your point, Kobe. If that fight goes another 25 seconds, suddenly they're losing an inhibitor turret to the Winnians in the top side. You gotta pick your battles. You gotta get the most you can, and just living, just hanging on in this best of five was honestly the most G2 could hope for. Yeah, and what can they complete? Not that much, right? You know that FPX are going to reset and they're going to come knocking once again. This time with Super Minions flooding in topside again with the weakened Nexus turrets as well. You can't let that go on for very long. Baron will 
uh, be spawning in 38 seconds. Let's see about the transition of wards into the next team fight area. We should mention this is probably the strongest point in the game for FBX. Relatively, it feels like every other thousand gold to G2 with their scaling is going to put them more and more into a scenario where they can fight. So they may be down 5,000 gold, but every thousand gold from here is better spent by G2 compared to FBX. All right, this is the opportunity oh. that G2 bought with that pick. They're trying to make a play in the fog of war. They have to hope for some member of FBX to be straggling and then take surprise once again. But that Scryer's Bloom gives up the whole game. Five seconds till Baron it is caught here on camera. Super's just about to crest the steps of the G2 base and Wonder with no teleport available. He's starting to make his way up. Fun Plus haven't even hesitated. They're already on the objective. G2 have only one controller. They have to use the Ezreal ult to check here. Baron at half health. All right, True Shot Barrage goes up. Death Centers lands onto Yankos. He caught up by the box and the play. He goes in with the Cataclysm and hops right back out. The Baron is the target and it will be secured. It's LWX that does so, but it's at the cost of Chris Fly. Hero Zetras comes in and Doombi is chasing forward. That's already a kill onto Yankos. This could be it. Now Wonder's in trouble as Caps goes golden under the hourglass. He he needs to do so much more. We'll throw down the event horizon, but it doesn't matter. Two members of G2 are left to fend off four from Fun Plus Phoenix. FBX are headed straight for that Nexus, and it's only Wonder and Perks left standing. Fun Plus Phoenix are looking to silence the haters and stun the world with their own style of League of Legends. They are pushing onto the Nexus. The favorites of G2 in Paris did not stand a chance, and Fun Plus, they've taken down the Nexus. They took Turn their attention to Wonder. Tian goes down. Perks kills Kim Goon. The Nexus is being focused. It's going down. And Fun Plus Phoenix are your world champions. was one of the closest finishes I have seen. <laughs> but the series was one-sided. The LPL are back-to-back -back world champions. And today, Fun Plus Phoenix are the 2019 League of Legends world champions. FBX dominated the LPL, and they have dominated Worlds as well. There were doubters after the group stage, people wondering about their path here to the finals, but they leave no doubt about it in this series. And finally, Kobe, we can say for a region that's not Korea, that regional domination can translate to world domination. They come to Worlds. They had questions raised at the start of groups, but they built, they built, and they built, and the final form was Worlds best. And the question that we asked a couple games ago, is this the beginning of the LPL era? Yes, I mean, two years in a row, two, three, zero victories. You have to say goodbye to G2 Esports. They failed at the final hurdle. Caps, the only player to West, uh, LEC player to make back-to-back -back finals and go down 0-3 both times. Well, let's make sure to reframe that as failing the final hurdle for the yes. Grand Slam is still being one best of five away from being the first ever Grand Slam winners. It's still a massive result, but just like SKT and other teams, there is competition out there that can beat. Look at the smiles on the faces of Fun Plus Phoenix. Let's, let's hope they don't, <laughs> they don't get too carried away. Get some friends. With the Summoner's Cup. Looks pretty heavy. What a run. What a story, Kobe. They fail in spring. They, they didn't work in 2018. The addition of two players wins them the summer split. The number one seed from LPL eliminates the defending world champion and shuts down the European team that 
was somewhat fable to take it all. And they did it in style, in their own style. A week ago, Warhorse and FPX, they said they wanted Paris to cheer FPX, and that is what you are hearing now. Fun plus Phoenix are being acknowledged by the Parisian crowd. Kobe, you're 100% right, in style. It also highlights how you can have success with fairly young talent, fresh faces to the world stage, coming in and dominating in this fashion. Having your own system versus a team that found most of their success at Worlds by responding and disseminating the enemy system seemed to be an edge here. And when we had such split allegiance, it really felt like the LSK and LPL were very dominantly behind FBX as the champion here. And the Western regions very behind the idea of G2 running the Grand Slam. But it's a reality check for the world here in the manner in which FBX just ran over G2. Bonjour Paris. Thank you for the respect and the admiration that FPX deserve. The team said they wanted to hear those cheers and they did. And they have earned them. Unequivocally the best team on the day today. And while this series did not look great for G2, like you said, Papa Smithy, it has been a phenomenal year for the players on your screen. It was the final series they went eight and one in best of fives this year. But that one loss will sting more than any other. FBL will take the Summoners Cup back to China next year for Worlds, potentially FBX defending their crown in that tournament. So much to think about here. It's a big moment, even if it wasn't the five game series that I think a lot of people were back. After game one, I had so much hope. It didn't work out. Now we're going to head on stage where Shox is interviewing your new world champions. Thank you very much. I am here with the 2019 world champions, FPX. And first up, I have to go to doing me, a man who's been through so much and has fought so hard to get to this point. What does it mean to you to be able to lift the Summoner's Cup? 呃,中比你目前已经征战了非常的多年,终于可以举起这个召唤师总决赛的奖杯对你的人是什么意义? I think that I've finally proven myself. Even a mid laner like me could take the championship. Before this, a lot of people said that a mid laner that played my style didn't deserve to win the championship, but I think I finally proved it. I am deserving, and I want to thank all of my teammates and everyone that supported me. Fantastic. Elle remercie toute son équipe et dit que normalement les personnes ont dit que une personne et un mid laner avec cette ci ne peut pas gagner, mais il a gagné et il veut remercier tous les fans. I have to also go to LWX. LWX, you played absolutely out of your mind, not just in this game, but the entire tournament. Same question for you. What does it mean to you to be able to become a world champion? LWX, I think I have also proven myself in this finals. <laughs> yes, he has. Um, LWX, could you also tell me why you think you are so much better than your opponent's G2 today as a team? LWX, Today, I don't think it's because we performed especially well, it's because our opponents didn't really perform. Alors, il explique qu'ils ont gagné pas. 
euh, avec du jeu parfait, mais simplement parce que G2 n'a pas euh, joué très bien aujourd'hui. Um, I do have to also ask about all the support you receive from the fans. And Duinby, you and FPX have gained so many fans in Europe and all around the world for your play this World Championship. What would you like to say to all of them and all of them at home? Duinby, this time you came to Europe and you have gained so many fans. Do you have any words you want to say to the fans you have gained so many fans or to the fans you have gained? We've been waiting for 40 days. This word can be heard again. We are the champions! We've been waiting for 40 days to say this, and finally we can say it on stage. We are the champions! I think that it's not a translation. They are the champions. And then I also want to ask about one very special fan in particular. Your beautiful wife, Umi, who has been there throughout your entire career and has cheered for you at every single stage this world. What would you like to say to her? Uh,真的感谢你的陪伴,然后就因为之前,呃,我拍,我本来想就退一马,然后当时他说再打一年,相信自己,然后后来拿了冠军,我觉得都是没有他的话,我觉得我们,我走不到这舞台上。Before we came to Worlds, I said that I would take you to Paris, but I didn't say I would win the World Championship. And looking back at it right now, I, I really want to thank you for all your company. Before this, I was contemplating retirement, and it was you who told me to believe in myself and give it one more year. So this championship, I, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much. Fantastic, Louis Bidi, que c'est grâce à sa femme qu'il a gagné aujourd'hui et qui n'a pas, um, qui était encore en train de jouer. Fantastic, fantastic. Can I get it up one more time for Dunby, LWX, and FPX? You can now join your team. Et maintenant, pour la présentation des, des médailles à nos champions du monde, je vous prie d'accueillir nos dignitaires to present the medals to our 2019 League of Legends World Champions. I'd like to invite Nicolo Laurent, Riot Games CEO, Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck, founders of Riot Games, John Needham, global head of League of Legends Esports, and Monsieur Jean-François Martin, deputy mayor of Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, you're getting a look at our 2019 World Champions Fun Plus Phoenix. They've done it again for the LPL as IG fell in the semifinals. FPX said, don't you worry. We'll give us the opportunity to defend another title on home soil just next year. And they worked so hard for this title. Three of the five members of this team were a seventh place team just last year. They merged together as a team. They practiced harder than anyone else. They even had stumbles at the very start of Worlds, dropping their very first game to J-Team. But they didn't drop a single game in the finals. The only sweep of the entire knockout stage. I felt like they didn't even drop a single moment in this series. This was such highs from the team. And we talk about how it feels like we finally got to see FPX. You got to see FPX at their peak. Everyone yeah. was performing. LWX, I believe, went deathless this entire series. Chris yeah. was an absolute monster today. First best, time that's happened in a world championship, having a yeah. deathless player. It would have been two if Gimgun didn't die at the final Nexus push. 
I think just unreal how well they played. Uh, G2 had no answers for the first time in a year. An absolutely stellar performance out of all five members of that team and the support staff behind them. We already have the opportunity to hear from Dune B and LWX on stage in that winner's yes, interview. Please. What it means for them to rise to the title of champion individually, to approve themselves when others may have doubted, and to extend that thank you to the support system behind them. It it's frankly such a surreal moment for Doimbi, uh, watching him coming into 2015. Chao Gu were called the kings of team fighting, and again, it was just unlock after unlock after unlock. You never got to see him on the international stage, his first go at it, and to say that he thought about retiring, the fact that the world was almost denied this. And as we speak about the accomplishments of the team as a whole, we are nearing that all-important presentation of the finals MVP again. Five players do make a team and make a world championship, but one makes an MVP, so we're going back to shocks. Presented by Oppo. Maintenant, il est temps d'annoncer le MVP de la finale, présenté par Oppo. And this year's winner was voted on by a committee of shoutcasters, experts, and journalists from around the world, representing every competitive region that took part in Worlds 2019. Le gagnant a été choisi par un comité de journalistes, experts, et um, commentateurs à travers le monde, représentant toutes les régions qui ont fait partie des Worlds 2019. Paris, un tonnerre d'applaudissements pour le MVP Oppo du Mondial 2019, Paris. Please join me in congratulating your 2019 World Championship Finals Oppo MVP, Tian. Merci, Nicolo. Tien, congratulations on a phenomenal world championship. Can you tell me about the honor of winning the Oppo MVP here in the final? <laughs> you can yeah, hold it if you like. Thank you for winning the MVP of the World Championship MVP. Can you tell us what the honor of winning the Oppo MVP of the World Championship is for you? I think... 我這三盤就是做到了自己該做的,然後MVP,FMVP這個是我沒有想到的,我覺得我現在很驚訝吧。I felt in these three games I did everything that I sh was required to do, but to take the MV FMVP, I'm actually very surprised. <laughs> Il est encore un peu surpris d'être d'avoir gagnant, gagné le MVP. But when we look at the entire tournament and also the finals, you did play phenomenally well. So what would you say puts you above the other junglers in this tournament and also the one in this final? Uh, 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 很多人会说我的打法像谁谁谁像谁谁谁其实我一直觉得我是就是我的风格是怎么说就是跟别人完全不一样的但我之前一直没有机会就是说证明自己现在我想说就是我就是我自己我就是天 Back in China, I used to read a lot of comment sections that said Tian played like XXX player, played like who, who, who. But this time, I just wanted to prove that I am myself, I am Tian. He explained that he read a lot of comments very, very well. 
Et maintenant, il est fier d'être Tien et d'être le MVP au pot de, de la finale. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Tien. You can join your team to lift the trophy once again. Tien, don't forget this. <laughs> There you have it, the MVP, Tien, humbly accepting his yep. award, citing that he does believe he fulfilled his duties, uh, but a bit surprised to have received it himself. Wait for the left. Oh, team the moment that all of China and FPX has been waiting for, as a team and as a region, to lift this trophy once again. An incredible moment made possible by an incredible team. Made all that much more incredible when we talk about where they came from. What they had to go through, the obstacles they had to overcome to make this statement so definitively on this stage today. Domestically this year, they were 0.7% off being the most winningest team in LPL history. Throughout playoffs, they showcased what they were capable of. We were all doubters of whether or not they would be able to match what G2 showed, but they silenced us with a clean 3-0 and an impressive performance. The LPL showcased that it is filled to the brim with talent as a new team claims the title of world champion. And I even think talking about the MVP, it's very hard to give out that award. It was a group of people that awarded it. I think you could make arguments for Chris, for LWX, for Tien, obviously, but I feel like they won so much as a team. And that was really their story this entire world. It feels like to compete with G2, you had to have mechanics as the bare minimum. Otherwise, it wasn't going to be a contest. And now in the LPL, you must be superstars to even get close to the top. The fact that they went through the defending world champion, that they uh, took the title in both, or, or in the summer and had the winningest record, like, filled to the brim doesn't even begin yeah. to cover it. This is 16 teams, seven different arenas, the biggest league in the world, and it's just gonna keep coming. LPL's dominance will not stop. And it's going to Worlds next year. Worlds is going to be in China. And I think this FPX team can be inspirational to other teams, maybe even more so than IG. Because IG had the shy and rookie, two people who you're going to say, wow, they're just on another level. It's like they have cheat codes on. Whereas this team, literally a year ago, none of these players would be considered top two, maybe top three in the world. Doinby would be the only one who'd begin that conversation. But in a year, they've become world champions. And it's this idea of ripples. This team doesn't exist if Edward Gaming hadn't won in 2015. Tian talks about Clear Love, how he was inspired by him. Rance did a beautiful segment talking about the history there. Chris as well. These guys, they watched EDG lift that trophy. They now lift it today. And like you're saying, Jack, who knows who will see this? League is that old now that these players are growing up knowing, I want to be Chris. I want to be Tian. And as Fun Plus Phoenix takes their victory lap around the Accor Hotels Arena, taking their bows and breathing in this moment, we can confidently say that Doonby got his wish from just a couple weeks ago when he said, I hope that people can chant our name yeah. when we make it to the finals and hoist that Summoner's Cup. That very thing did take place today, and it is so much deserved. Also want to credit this crowd as well. You know there were a ton of G2 hopeful, but they are showing the due respect to the world champions, giving them a standing ovation earlier, chanting their name, as you mentioned, and applauding them once again as they take their victory that lap. That trophy's heavy. I like to see them sharing the load. <laughs> Teamwork all the way from start to finish. I think it's only fitting that it's Chris and Tian that are leading the charge there. We talked about how if anyone was going to outclass a position, it was going to start with those two. Yeah. I think they certainly proved 100%. it on the day. And I love the fact that these interviews, again, it was all about proving myself, showing that this name, Tian, I, you know, I'm not this other jungler. You don't have to say I'm playing like someone else. I'm mm -hmm. playing like Tian. 
I was better than anyone else in my role at Worlds. G2 re-entering their the arena themselves. An opportunity to stand in front of the crowd once again. On home soil, they fought valiantly again, as you mentioned, Frost. It should not go unrecognized that this team came closer than any to completing the Grand Slam, falling short in only a single best of five this entire year. Knowing the players, they're going to feel nothing but disappointment. They're going to feel angry, frustrated. It's, it's too hard to describe how devastated they must feel, but to come back out and soak in the crowd. G2 Esports is not done. That This team will be back next year and you can expect great things from them once again. A much-deserved bow for an incredible tournament run. And Deficio, I'm only reminded of our discussion at the beginning of the day around G2 and how they ascended to the position they are, their periods of rebuilding, moment, the like constant to... iteration. And now we'll hear from the team themselves. Back to shots. What you can, despite everything, say about your wonderful players. It's, a, it's complicated because I'm, 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 I'm really sad. Oh. I'm really... Fuck! No, I'm... I'm very proud of all the fans that came here, all the fans that supported online, the players, the support staff, management, everybody worked so hard to get here. It was an unbelievable year. Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh. And... Uh, Today, um, Fan Plus Phoenix played better. They deserved it. The winner has to be the better team, and they were the better team. And I'm very proud of everybody, everything we've done this year. We just got started, and it's 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 hard to see it right now because we just lost. But a lot of uh, we, sh we should be proud. Uh, you guys should be proud of all the players. Fuck. Don't worry, Carlos. We completely understand your reaction. I am going to let you go because I see how hard this is for you. Thank you so much for speaking to me, unless there's anything else you'd want to say. No? Go ahead. Fuck. No problem. Despite the loss, G2 Esports is saying hello to their fans who have supported them. Once again, a big thank you for Ocelot for speaking to us. And we will look forward to the future for G2 as well. But now moving on and looking ahead, l'année dernière, Riot Games a annoncé que la Chine sera l'hôte du Mondial 2020. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons un peu plus à partager au sujet du 10e championnat du monde. Last year, Riot Games announced that China would be the host of the World Championship in 2020. And today, we have a little more to share as we look towards the 10th League of Legends World Championship. <laughs> 